hello 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 am i live come on tell me i'm live please 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 let's uh give me a couple of minutes guys because i need to share this across uh uh hopefully this is working it says i had some problems guys the other day with drop frames um while connected to this modem i'm connected to today um hopefully it's fixed itself after a reboot so we'll see how we go but if you're having any problems with drop frames if i'm freezing and all that let me know yeah please if you don't mind and like i said give me a minute because i need to share this on facebook um where are we okay here we go live now live now over at twitch.tv slash jerky m food see you there okay where are we let me go back to my okay live now at twitch.tv slash jackie and food here you go okay where are we hi links how are you doing yes that is the blue tea that i mentioned before so guys um thanks for joining me by the way my name is jackie m and i am a malaysian born sydney australia based former restauranter and nowadays i live stream on twitch among other things that i do i stream four times a week and I basically cover uh, Southeast Asian cooking and more generally Asian cooking. And uh, today starts the uh, my series of recipes using this particular ingredient called, um, you know, <laughs> it's called bunga telang in Malay. And apparently it's called uh, blue, uh, blue butterfly flower. I think it is. Let me have a look. Um, we've had so yeah blue butterfly flower apparently I thought it was called blue pea flower but apparently it's blue butterfly power powder this is a real tongue twister by the way and also before I <laughs> go on any further uh, Sammy hey how you doing uh, I gotta win this <laughs> okay so the good news is I've got uh, spread over the next three broadcasts I've got ten sets of these to give away okay what you see over here these are two sachets of the powder itself it provides a blue coloring that we use uh, that's highly um, sought after here in Australia actually among the Malaysian community but uh, because we're not catering purely to the Malaysian community um, the people who brought this into this country hey Sammy thanks for hosting um, have also um, produced them as tea okay so these are two packs of tea and these are two sachets of the uh, uh, powder right and i've got 10 sets of two of each of these to give away uh spread across the next three broadcasts right uh i have to dig out my own stash to use i just give me a second okay right so yes you win all of that for each set okay and it will get sent out courtesy i'm so watching every broadcast i'm going to actually i haven't looked in uh in all honesty i haven't actually used them yet i'm i'm, I'm kind of like going in cold turkey here this is not the bag i'm going in cold turkey and i am um figuring it out as i go along all right is this the bag no this is not the bag Okay, here we go. So this is my stash to use. Jocelyn, how you doing? Oh, cool, very cool. Um, make sure you follow me uh, on Twitch as well, Jocelyn. It's free to follow, by the way, guys. I know there's a lot of confusion among people who are not actually uh, in the Twitch ecosystem because when you hop over to twitch.tv slash Jackie and food, there's uh, automatically pops up a subscribe button that costs $4.99 per month to subscribe. You don't actually have to subscribe to my channel, right? Subscription brings its own benefits, but you just have to follow. Uh, otherwise, the automated software that I use to draw the giveaways will not pick your name up out of the... Uh, out of those people who are eligible okay so by the way guys this is uh 
multi streaming on YouTube and on Periscope. I hope it's working on Periscope, but um, if you're watching this anywhere else at all, um, just keep in mind, um, you know, I'll try and monitor the, the chat comments everywhere. But just keep in mind, it's only if you follow me on Twitch that your name will automatically get picked up by this giveaway tool that I use later on during the show. Okay, so uh, uh, hi YouTube people, <laughs> just ban everyone else can win five prizes. <laughs> I know, right? That's, that sounds like a plan. Just let me uh, scroll this down a little bit. I'm always uh, leery about uh, seeing the stats while I'm live streaming because I don't want it to throw me off. Okay, um, but anyway, so these are the blue. Um, this is gonna be a real tongue twister because I struggled with it the other day as well. So blue butterfly flower powder. Okay, so that's what we're trying to say. That's what we're trying to cover. And uh, I'm going in like kind of like um, I'm launching into this pretty full on because like I said, I've never actually used these these um, uh, in this form before, right? I've used the actual flower extract in Malaysia, actually it was more of a coloring in Malaysia. Um, but there's a, a dish that I've been meaning to replicate since um, I attempted it live on air at the Grand Hyatt in Kuala Lumpur a couple of years ago, but I've just never been able to get a hold of the this uh, Bunga Telang extract. Okay, I'm just gonna call it Bunga Telang from now on, okay, because it's a Malay word for it. Um, but otherwise, it's blue butterfly flower, okay, because like it's a mouthful that I, 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 <laughs> I get thrown off every time I try and say it. Okay, this is for High Links' uh, benefit, because um, High Links is a tea person. Right, these are the tea bags I mentioned before. So essentially, there's two products. They're both based around the uh, Bunga Telang, right? One in powdered extract form, which we're gonna use in some recipes tonight, and the other, uh, the other is like uh, basically these packs of tea bags. Okay, there's a. Uh, a handful of tea bags in each of these packs so uh alex who brought this into the country uh has very generously like i said offered 10 sets of two of each uh two you know two bag two packs of tea and two packs of these uh, uh powders uh 10 packs to my twitch audience okay over the next three broadcasts and um so let's do the tea first so i can show you what it looks like and it'll be a revelation to me as well because it's my first time doing it Okay, so in goes the tea. By the way, has obviously the blue flower, uh, and also it's got um, it's got lemongrass and a bunch of other herbs as well for you. Okay, I'm stuck trying to say Lisa bunga telang. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's so much easier when you say bunga telang. <laughs> Sam, I, I was I was actually thinking of making a competition for whoever can uh, roll it off their tongue quickly. You know, blue flower, blue butterfly flower powder okay I, I thought about getting people on discord to say it okay so we're gonna let this um soak for a little bit i don't know if you can see it just starting to gently turn blue now okay so the uh, flower itself has antioxidant properties and all that okay so it's a healthy tea drink for you but the powder itself we're going to use for uh, some recipes tonight well <laughs> when i say some recipes look i'm making like i said uh, a dish called boom uh Say bunga everywhere. Uh, nasi krabu. Okay, nasi krabu is from uh, this particular version is from Kelantan up north in Malaysia. Um, and the defining feature of this essentially is kind of like a, a rice with a number of different uh, accompaniments. And I've split this into two broadcasts actually because uh, traditional uh, nasi krabu comes with a lot of accompaniments, uh, some of which we're not going to be able to make from start to finish tonight. Okay, so we'll get started on it a little bit. But what we want to do is we want to cook some blue rice. Uh, we want to make some surunding. Surunding is a Malaysian um, meat floss, okay? Shredded uh, shredded kind of like a beef curry flavored floss. And for that, I'm going to use some uh, uh, gravy beef over here. I'm going to throw it into one of my pressure cookers, which I'm trialing at the moment. So they're part of my um, uh, <laughs> life as a uh, cook and consultant is that I, uh, I, I basically uh, test a lot of uh, kitchen appliances, all right? Uh, well, if I've been offered to make the nasi krabu, yeah, exactly, for all the YouTube Periscope viewers, and it takes a few minutes to create a Twitch account. I know, right? Can't tell them that. <laughs> Especially the, uh, the Facebook crowd, oh man. Facebook Instagrammers, they're, like the t they're really like uh, 
tough crowd to pull over to Twitch. Okay, you see this is turning into a beautifully like a subtle blue color, okay? And um, now, I'm going to actually throw this into the pressure cooker first and I want to pressure cook it and then uh, then we're going to take it out of the pressure cooker, we're going to shred it and then we're going to make srunding with it. Srunding is like I said, it's kind of like, it essentially tastes like a curry but with shredded meat and it's dry, alright? So it's, it looks like meat floss if you're familiar with that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not promoting this particular <laughs> uh, appliance. I'm testing it out, all right, as, a, as part of my uh, uh, comparison study. And by the way, before I go on any further, shout out to Lenovo Australia for the laptops I use for my live streaming and also uh, for uh, monitoring the, uh, the, my, my, my sessions and all that. And also shout out to Rode Microphones, right, for the microphone I use for my live streaming. And also, don't forget, I still have three Rode microphones to give away and three Lenovo mini speakers to give away. The next uh, giveaway, uh, apart from this series, okay, so we're, we're definitely giving away a whole bunch of, uh, of these um, over these next three sessions. But apart from that, when we hit certain milestones, when I hit 1850 followers, uh, what are we, I don't even know what we are at at the moment. When we hit 1850 uh, followers, we'll, it'll automatically trigger a giveaway for a, a Lenovo mini speaker. And then when we hit 1900, we'll give away another Rode microphone. Okay, so seven people uh, have already won one of each of, uh, of these. Okay, so that's the beef. I'm going to throw in a little bit of water. And I'm going to pressure cook it. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is my first time cooking this beef in this pot. So hopefully it turns out okay. But basically, like I said, it's kind of, I'm trying to kill a few birds with one stone. Um, and figure out how these units work and how well they work to the point okay okay I want to starting <laughs> okay try it how you doing uh, can I make this meat floss with white meat yes you can I actually thought about using chicken actually but because I wanted to try out the um, <clears throat> the pressure cooker I thought I'd get a tough cut of meat and that way I'll get a good idea of how well it works but yeah totally you can use chicken you can just poach the chicken and then shred it and sometimes if I'm lazy I actually blend the chicken the blend the cooked chicken all right it gives it a different texture obviously it then becomes like little bits right but I mean it it's, I, I don't have a problem with that per se. Okay, let's do the rice. Okay, and like I said, this is going to take a little bit of experimentation because I haven't actually used this product yet. So <laughs> I don't know how much rice, how much uh, of the powder I need to use, but I'm just going to go for it and put some rice here. And as far as the accompaniments, apart from the surrounding, I'm also making two other things. Uh, one of it's. Um, it's called solot lada, okay? It's kind of like a Malay version of, uh, you guys have seen me make fish paste and like stuffed eggplants, yong tau fu and all that sort of stuff multiple times on Twitch. But this time I'm gonna do a, like a, essentially like a stuffed chili, but Malay style using uh, shredded, using uh, basically fish paste, but uh, with a couple of like uh, unusual twists to it, okay? So you'll get to see me do that. So that's the rice, right? Like I said, I'm kind of like going in blind here. I don't know how much of this flour, um, flour powder I need to use. Uh, where are we? Scissors. So hopefully I use enough to kind of like make it strain out. <laughs> Shredded or blended post chicken, yeah, for nasi krabu, absolutely. And what works really well if you like, if you like, if you're from a small household like me and Noah, <laughs> and like say if I've got barbecue chicken or roast lamb or like uh, leftover bits of uh, meat, I use those, all right. I just throw them into the uh, blender and then just uh, zap them. Okay, so this is just 10 grams of this uh, powder, okay. And uh, by the way, to okay, I'll just put that much in there. Hopefully, that uh, is enough. 
and I'm just gonna add water to it and I'm just gonna cook it like normal rice okay so let's give it a bit of a stir okay you can see it here It's so dark that uh, you can barely make it out now. Now in Malaysia, like in KL, when we made this dish at the Grand Hyatt during a live broadcast a couple of years ago, um, we actually used just a uh, blue food coloring, okay? But this is obviously much, much healthier for you and um, much more traditional and authentic, okay? So let's finish and cook the rice. So that's so the giveaway won't be for a while. I can safely go get bread. <laughs> yes, you can. You like a what a beautiful blue color, right? I know. Okay, so this is the tea. Okay, okay. So you can see it, nice and blue. I'm gonna try it. Okay, it's got a very very nice flavor. Um, I don't know the exact combination of herbs in this, but it's a very very nice. The highlings you will love this. To add any flavor? Is it just blue? Either way, it looks quite nice. Uh, I think it's fairly flavor neutral, right? And I want to mention, right, uh, hang on. I've held this up before, okay? Because in the past, right, <coughs> I'm stumbling. <coughs> in the past, when I've tried to look for this uh, blue flower here in Australia, people say, oh, go and look at uh, flower power and, you know, those gardening centers and stuff like that. Never been able to find this particular blue flower that you use to extract the uh, coloring uh, from. So someone at some point on Facebook told me that, oh, look, you can buy the blue flower extract at, uh, you know, uh, select bottle shops because Westerners nowadays as part of like this uh, trend, right, use it basically as kind of like a mixer, okay, like a, to give it a nice blue color. So I actually bought two bottles of this online from uh, Dan Murphy's, it's an Australian bottle shop, right? And they cost me about, I think from memory, about 45 bucks, including delivery. So it was quite expensive. And what I found was that, um, well, first of all, the color is not that intense, okay? It looks like it's concentrated, but it's not. But second of all, it's actually sweet, okay? So I couldn't use this in savory dishes. Um, I know that the, this blue flower is used in a lot of sweet dishes. So if you're, if you're wanting to make sweets, I guess this could work. But if you want something that's flavor neutral, um, this is what you need, all right? And you can buy it, like um, the Facebook page for this, um, uh, for Alex, uh, who, who's the person behind this brand, right? The Facebook page is called My Blue Tea, all right? Um, <laughs> so the focus is on the tea, uh, but you know, obviously they don't just sell the tea, they sell the, the, uh, the powder as well. Um, okay, so it's a cocktail coloring. Yeah, it's only, yeah, if only I were a drinker. <laughs> Maybe you should take up drinking. <laughs> the original flower has no flavor. There you go, that's cooking for you. Mm. If you add lemon juice, it turns pink. Is that right? Is that right? No, I'm gonna try it. I don't have fresh lemon juice. I've just only got this uh, thing over here. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. How cool is that? Okay. Look, it's uh, well, it's kind of purple now. It did look like it's got pink hue in it. In YouTube, there's a video where they use blue Powerade in a rice cooker. Blue power. What's Powerade to make blue rice? I know, right? Wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> I didn't know you could get uh, blue power. Right? Look, it's turned purple now with the uh, with the addition of uh, just a dash of lemon juice. So it's quite quite interesting how it behaves, right? So we're gonna have some fun experimenting with some recipes for it. But like I said, we're just cooking the rice at the moment. Um, and um, no, uh, being considering that we're in Australia and all that, these recipes are going to be a little bit different to what you would get from your uh, traditional Kelantanese home cook, okay? So one of the points of difference with the fish is that we're going to use basil fillets, okay? So these are my basil fillets, frozen basil fillets defrosted, and I'm going to use it to make some fish paste, and I'm going to make two different things with it, okay? First of all, I'm going to use it May, uh, use some of it as the filling for this thing called solot lada, which I mentioned earlier, which is basically like a Malay stuffed uh, chili, okay? And the other thing we're going to make, which we're not going to be able to finish tonight because it needs to like 
uh, cool down, needs to be refrigerated, it needs to then be uh, baked and all that sort of stuff. Is so uh, we're gonna have a go at making fish crackers, okay? Let's get on to it. So you've seen me use this multiple times on my broad, uh, broadcast. Let's take it out. Because it's defrosted, it's going to, it's a sports drink. All right. Good old dirt cheap as <laughs> I know, right? Look, um, in Malaysia, they will use like uh, something like a mackerel or something like one of those, um, you know, I guess, I don't know if dark meat's the right word to use for like different types of fish flesh, but you get, you get what I mean, right? My brother like used to call it like muddy fish, all right? Kind of like, you know, the kind of fish that's like, you know, like sardines and, and mackerel and all that, that produce that kind of like uh, fairly, um, the texture is different to like white fish fillets. So basso is white fish. Um, so that's already one point of difference. No more distractions. <laughs> I miss a little of this. Okay, cool, right here. See you in a bit, highlings. Okay, so let's put this away. And I'm gonna actually just cut up like these into chunks before I throw them into my food processor. I probably won't, look, I'm gonna like process all of it, but I'm not going to use that much of it for some of these recipes, all right? Um, because <laughs> I like to save them for my Chinese style yong tau fu stuffed eggplant and whatnot. Okay, so let's cut these up into lots of three. Macro and sardines, incredibly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they, 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 they're kind of like stronger flavored sort of thing. And bass is pretty bland, you're totally right. Yeah, so those are like some. And the, uh, the other thing is like, um, while it, while the Malay style stuffed chili uh, also uses fish, like uh, the Chinese stuffed chili, the texture is meant to be coarser, okay? So I'm going to probably end up um, with a more Chinese version of it. But there are a few things that go into the Malay style one which you wouldn't find in the Chinese one, okay? But uh, uh, things like uh, shredded coconut um, and onion and garlic, okay? And as far as onion, I'm going to actually use um, uh, I'm going to use fried shallots in this case. So let's do this. Okay, so that's my thermocook. I'm using it as basically a food processor at this point. Okay. And I'm going to blend all of this and then I'll take it out, um, split it into probably two or three. Um, and then I will basically blend them again, to, uh, depend, uh, you know, kind of like with other ingredients added for the respective recipes. Okay. So that's five seconds in the So I'm going to work this a little bit more with uh, other ingredients and seasoning added to it, okay? So that's that, and then the rest of it. We'll try olive stuffed with sardines. No, that sounds weird. Olive stuffed with sardines? Is that Spanish or like tapas or something like that? I, I've never heard of that. Jesse, I will try to be quick, but well, Jesse's a dog. <laughs> I got you know, my dog's name mixed up. Oh, come on. <laughs> Friend Dota, how you doing? Okay, so let's take this out. So I've got two lots here, and look, it's not going to be enough for me to make my uh, Chinese yong tau fu, to save any of this for my Chinese yong tau fu, okay? So all of this is going to go into tonight's uh, recipes. And don't forget guys, uh, my uh, website jackiem.com.au is where you will find the recipes uh, of everything that I cook, right? 
Um, the yeah. So look at this. Isn't that pretty? So it, it, the color gets more intense the longer you leave the tea bag in, obviously. So let me just okay. Now what I want to do, like I said, um, the the salt ladder, the stuffed chilies, and of the stuffed chilies, I, I kind of I had to scrounge around in my fridge. So I've got these ones that I bought a couple of weeks ago. You guys all remember, which I said was only a dollar ninety nine. So I still have them, and they're still in a decent condition. So I'm going to stuff a couple of these, but primarily I'll be stuffing this big giant one. Okay, this is the one that lacks heat altogether. Uh, so I'll probably do maybe like about three or four of them. Um, that should be enough for them. And for the other one, like I said, I'm going to use to uh, use it to make uh, prawn crackers. Okay, and for that, I'm going to need to add seasoning as well as uh, corn flour. Okay, let's get into that. Right, I need to get, I'm trying to think, I need, I need onion, but I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use the dried onion as usual. And if I can find my fried shallots, yep, here you go. So again, I'm cheating here, you're meant to use fried shallots or fried onion, um, but like I said, you know, I'm, I'm cheating here partly because uh, bassa fillets, I have a lot of uh, moisture in them already unlike uh, the drier uh, types of fish like mackerel right so if I use fresh onion it might actually make it too soggy so we're going to do a yeah 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 time out no worries uh, hirelings <laughs> now oh cool look I, I trust you guys implicitly okay all you mods you guys are doing a good job so yeah use use your own judgment and i will back you 100 percent. okay don't worry about like uh, <laughs> blocking the wrong people or tiding out the wrong people uh life's too sh life's too short to deal with trolls or people who are just <laughs> immature basically um okay so two lots of these first let's do the uh the solo ladder stuff let me get some shredded Shredded uh, coconut. <laughs> don't do it again. Don't do it again, Brandoda. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so um, I'm trying to figure out which lot I should use it. Not that evenly distributed. Okay. Okay. So some shredded coconut in here, okay? I'm going fully aga aga tonight, which uh, in Malay means guesstimating. All right. And again, I'm using the uh, dried garlic granules. You, you know, obviously fresh is always best. Uh, in this particular instance, because I'm trying to keep this as dry as possible, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go with the dried garlic. All right, but uh, you know, I, 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 t I tend to shy away from those bottled minced garlic that people buy, right? Uh, but entirely your prerogative. So some uh, sprinkling of the garlic and some prepared fried shallots, all right? You guys have seen me use this often enough in here. Okay, the only thing is that this is gonna change the, uh, the visual appearance of this thing because it's gonna give it some little black specks, all right? Now we're gonna add some seasoning to this. I'm gonna put a, a little bit of sugar because bass is pretty flavor flavorless okay so just a pinch of sugar i'll put some chicken powder in it you know me and my chicken powder okay and uh pepper okay so hey remy how you doing time out friend dota <laughs> Did they? <laughs> they just got time now. I think I think they're at that stage where you're better off just banning them. <laughs> okay, so uh, white pepper in there. All right, so let's mix this up. Okay, and I'm gonna actually throw in some uh, cornstarch. Totally forgot about that. There you go. So the cornstarch just helps to kind of like um, bind everything together, all right? Mm, for this amount, probably about, uh, 
One in a bit, no drugs allowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a Christian server, guys. No bad language, no drugs, no nothing. <laughs> this is the Amish. <laughs> this is the most holy ch channel on Twitch. <laughs> the most... The most G-rated channel on Twitch, all right? Okay, so let's just mix it all up. Okay, like I said, you know, uh, <laughs> I always mention about how the, the Chinese are very particular about texture, about uh, how smooth and how silky things taste, all right? Malay cooking is a bit different, all right? So Malay cooking, uh, they're quite happy to, for this to be a little bit coarse. Okay. So this is what it look like, looks like. And then what we're going to do, in fact, after we stuff these chilies, right, is that we're going to actually simmer them in coconut milk, uh, coconut cream. Simmer them till um, all the coconut cream is absorbed into them. You're making nasi krabu, yeah. <laughs> hey, Sammy, how you doing? All right. Okay, so I'm just... Kind of like pounding this. this is a very chinese thing that i'm bringing into the equation right the pounding thing um the idea is that it makes it more bouncy okay the malays uh, aren't that uh, fixated on that i'm just adding a bit of uh, shredded coconut to this okay i'm using desiccated coconut because it's easy but in malaysia everything's fresh so you would be using freshly grated coconut in this case right these are uh, little points of difference I like to make things like uh, accessible to a uh, you know someone who's gonna attempt this in a kitchen where they don't have a lot of the stuff that we get in Asia. I just managed to get a bit of fish on my floor, so let me just clean that up. Okay. Okay, so guys, stick around because uh, we're gonna do a draw today for the uh, sets of these blue flower tea, herbal tea, and sachets of the blue flower powder. Okay, um, I think someone like Remy will be like, "Oh, I don't get it," because <laughs> she's in Remy is in Malaysia, and uh, so she's kind of like pretty spoiled. But if you live outside of Malaysia and you like to experiment with Malaysian cooking, this will be like a the dream come true. Okay, so this next lot, I'm going to actually, I'm going to have to use all of it. Um, oh, what the hell. Okay, so I'm going to uh, use this to make, uh, hopefully, um, uh, fish crackers, okay? So again, seasoning. And my seasoning, uh, I always use some chicken powder in this, okay? Don't go too crazy because a little goes a long way. Um, and if you're averse to using chicken powder that contains MSG, use one that doesn't, or don't use it at all, all right? Just put salt in it and that will do the job. Uh, a little bit of sugar. Fish crackers, never seen. Yeah, you gotta, like, we need to deep fry this at the end, but it won't happen till my next session this coming Friday. All right, uh, some white pepper again. How did I get this fish? randomly stuck everywhere how did i get this messy it's gonna wipe things down as i go i'm gonna move this kettle out of the way okay okay it says this is hot that never cooked at all what did i do wrong with this okay let me just try it again um meat um High pressure, uh, use the time. Okay, it says it's on. So obviously I'm already, are they fish cakes? No, uh, fish, uh, they are basically prawn crackers, but with fish. Um, so this is actually going to, like I said, it's gonna take a few steps, right? So we're going to actually uh, turn them into uh, cylinders and then we're going to steam them 
and then we're going to let them cool down and between now and uh, my next broadcast which is Friday at 6 p.m. Sydney time uh, I'm going to cut them into slices and I'm gonna uh, basically bake them at low heat essentially to dry it out usually in Malaysia they will sun them onto you know on on, on your <laughs> my, my aunt used to make this all the time and um, you know, in her little village she'll have like all these laid out on sheets in front of her house okay to get the sun and then you get these prawn cracker like uh, well, I guess cakes really slices that are hard and you deep fry them and they expand right um, but yeah but this is with fish so we got the um, all that sort of stuff we want a lot of um, we want a lot of uh, tapioca starch in this and I've got a feeling I really have a lot here you know let me just weigh this out So I'm very, I'm very, I'm, <laughs> I'm very stingy with my fish because I, I always uh, like using my fish paste to make stuff veggies with. Um, this is my, okay. Okay, that's about 500 grams plus here. I'm going to take some of it out. I'm going to take, uh, okay, I'll leave it just under 400 grams here and I'm gonna save the rest of this and this I can just kind of like fry up into fish balls or something like that so I want another uh, equal amount of um, of flour uh, I just want to find something to put that in all right just let's just put this here grams of tapioca flour which is a lot all right this might take the whole thing okay yeah more than that so I've got about 200 grams so far <laughs> triad <laughs> triad's a cool person right I've only made this once before guys all right so uh, this was probably more than a year ago so hopefully I've got the recipe right let me just hey triad how you doing <laughs> just be very concerned okay so I have a feeling I have to add some water to be able to mix this up well Okay, and let me just hop over and quickly check the recipe, see if I've got it right. Okay, this was my aunt's uh, specialty back in Malaysia, but she made, made prawn crackers, not fish, all right? And I think the last time I made it, I think I used prawns as well. Um, trying to remember. Yeah, so just let me quickly hop on and make sure I've got the recipe right. I hope I've got it open. Where are we? Okay. Prawn of fish crackers. All right. Yeah, so I have got it right. So I need more. I need more tapioca flour. Hopefully I've got some.
just when I was about to give out, give up. I'm watching you in the middle, Nick. <laughs> okay, so another 200 grams of tapioca flour. Let me pull up my screen again. So guys, you all know tapioca flour. Uh, you could replace it with corn flour you might need a bit more corn flour if you're using that all right okay i don't think i need that much to kill the flour i'm trying to think because i need to add some water to this it seems to me like a lot <laughs> move some things out of the way all right you can see it here and those of you who watched my broadcast the other day where I made the ha gao you know how like the first time around this, the, the recipe I tested did not work out I have a feeling I have a feeling that I might have put too much water in it that's why it didn't turn out because the one thing I didn't measure in that recipe was how much water was to go in all right so um, everyone was having a go at the because I found the recipe online that's why it said it was a recipe testing session and um, people assumed that the recipe was faulty but it might have just been me right okay so this is turning out quite good you can see it uh, not all the flour that's gone in actually I'm leery to add more in because it seems to me that uh, it's already a lot of flour all right I don't remember it looking like this the last time after the fact but it does seem to me like I would need more seasoning because uh, this is very very watered down with all the uh, extra flour and water added to it so, corn crackers and hot sauce for me <laughs> you know what goes well with prawn crackers in Malaysia uh, this uh, vegetable pickle called achar uh, it's just like uh, got crushed peanuts and it's got a whole bunch of like it's a, like a, it's a spicy vegetable pickle with crushed peanut uh, roasted sesame seeds us oh, we used to get like prawn crackers and just like uh, use them as like little uh, basically little holders for the uh, for the acha oh. can't eat can't stop eating that okay. So let's hopefully this is well mixed enough. I'm going to actually turn on the steamer in the meantime. And it says that my cooking is done. You're right. Let's see how it looks. Okay. It needs a little bit of a stir. That's my rice. Okay, so this is pretty much uh, spot on as far as the color I wanted to achieve. Okay, so it is meant to be quite intensely blue, this uh, nasi krabu. I'm a little bit concerned about the other pressure cooker. I miss my mom's acha. 
Yeah, I've done our channel a number of times actually. If you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jackie M, there's a, uh, so I, I call it a simple achar recipe. I call it simple not because it's a uh, compromise, right? <laughs> because I used to sell it at my restaurant. I used to use it in my restaurant. So it's a legit recipe. I call it simple because I think people generally, when they approach Malaysian cooking, they're so used to uh, to, to thinking that all oh, this kind of um, food uh, is very labor intensive. Um, so when they see me make an achar, like within 30 minutes, you know, I, I have to kind of like explain that you're not going to need to watch this for like <laughs> two hours. Okay. So achar, if you do it right, um, it doesn't have to take forever. Okay. So this is KL1's Ame. Is that right? Uh, the only time I get proper Nasi Krabu is up north in Kelantan. You know, when I made the Nasi Krabu, what I did have going for me is, was the fact that I, um, the, the, the woman who made it, <laughs> essentially, I, I kept saying I made Nasi Krabu, but in fact, I was just talking to her while she made it. Um, the woman who made it was actually a maid direct from Kelantan. So she was like an older maid. Who was, who was she was a live-in maid for the uh, for my house in Kuala Lumpur uh, so and she was direct from Kelantan so um, yeah so hers is pretty authentic I'm told <laughs> and I had that nasi karabu before that and uh, subsequently when I did go to Kelantan courtesy of uh, tourism Kelantan there was so incredibly much uh, by way of food, I just could not eat any nasi, uh, uh, nasi krabu while I was there. All right, so let me just throw the rest of this in and mix it up further. And I think I might need to add some water to it. Sorry about my nose, guys. So when I'm dealing with a lot of flour, just kind of like, because I'm, I'm actually allergic to dust. Pinning, not fangu. Kelantan Trangano makes good nasi krabu. Oh, okay. Nyonya makes yummy krabu. Okay. Oh yeah, you're thinking of the krabu as in the salad. Nasi krabu is like a more like a nasi champo. <laughs> mm. Okay. So more water in here, I reckon. Okay. Oops, that is too much water. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's that out <laughs> okay let's mix this up oops still too much water let's tip that out okay so you could potentially actually need this in the dough mixer all right to get to this worked in properly but I'm just because there's not much of it here I'm just doing it by hand okay so back in our parents day and age like even mincing the prawns and uh, mincing the fish and all that, you do that by hand, all right? So you would buy a whole fish, you would scrape it off, and then you chop it up. What's being made? We are making uh, something called nasi krabu, which is basically like a, a rice meal with a number of dishes. But the point of difference is that we use uh, the, the rice is blue in color, all right? So the feature of this and the subsequent um, two broadcasts is that I'm using these uh, blue flower products and I'll be giving some away at the end of this broadcast as well okay so this is one of the giveaways that are uh, where everybody is el eligible okay everybody who's a follower of mine on Twitch is eligible to win okay sometimes we are geographically limited because of uh, the cost of shipping things but Alex has very generously offered this to my international audience. So if you're watching this anywhere else, you're watching this on Periscope, you're watching this on YouTube, right? Guys, the only way to be in the draw for these giveaways is if you actually follow me on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food, all right? And if you're watching it on Facebook as well, okay? And you don't have to subscribe. I know the subscribe button pops up when you go to my channel, but you don't have to subscribe, just hit follow or if you're watching this from a mobile device, the follow button is actually the heart button, okay? It's very confusing, I know. Okay, so let's, this is looking okay. And let's bring the cutting board back. Sounds tasty, thank you. 
<laughs> Sorry, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> this thing is automated to prevent links. But uh, if you uh, if you send it to yeah, Remy. <laughs> Send it to Remy, uh, Remy as a whisper. Uh. Okay, this thing is looking a little bit rough, but there you go. We're going to, like I said, we're going to shape these into a couple of tubes. I should put gloves on again. Yeah, Remy is one of my uh, mods, so she can post links, but uh, other people can get caught by the bot. Okay. <laughs> this feels to me like it's a little bit too soft. It has to be sticky. Have you made this before, Lisa? Consistency have to be sticky. Um, you know what? Um, I, I think this is actually too sticky from memory. <laughs> but uh, once it's cooked up, it should be okay. Um, but the the corn starch is the or tapioca starch in my case is meant to kind of like uh, hold it all together. And, and corn starch, if you use enough of it, will actually uh, help absorb some of the moisture as well. It's just that I've added so much corn starch, and I'm I, I'm I'm disinclined to add more right but look um basically once we steam it up and then we let it cool down um you want to cool it down to the point where it's easy to slice up so we want to do that so which is why we're not going to be able to finish this particular dish tonight uh we'll finish it off on friday um then it needs to be basically sun dried or like kind of like dried in the oven which we're going to do on Friday, all right, and then it needs to be um, deep fried, all right. Those slices will need to be deep fried, and if everything works out well, it will kind of like puff up into these um, into these prawn crackers or fish crackers in this particular instance. Okay, so I'm being very indelicate with this. <laughs> all right, there you go. So two logs. They're a little bit big in all honesty, but it doesn't matter. Okay, let's throw it in. And I want to actually throw a cloth over it to prevent, prevent the steam, like the condensation. Okay. Okay. My um, fish is, my uh, meat is still going. Hopefully it works this time around. Is this crop let go? No, it's different. Grobot Leko is rubbery. Uh, I haven't quite acquired the taste for Grobot Leko myself. This is regular Grobot. But usually in uh, when you have Nasi Krabu, you don't, uh, well, the ones I had anyway did not go with Grobot Leko. They went with a uh, regular Grobot. All right, Grobot Ikan. I hate to say definitively that that's how it's meant to be done because I have only had it like a couple of times, you know, and I've only had it like, I've only seen it like a couple of times in Kelantan and and, and eaten it a couple of times in KL, so. But uh, the ones that I did have, they had it with like regular grapple gun. Just look really big. <laughs> That's because you're meant to slice it up, right? Um, and then you'll get basically these like crackers about this, about this size. And then when you fry it up, it should expand some more. Fingers crossed, it works. All right, let me get this out of the way and then I'll come back and um, do the next uh, lot.
Okay. Sleepy Mario. Just the thought of this make me hungry again. <laughs> the bell. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I've got the knife. Uh, we're gonna cut this open, right? I, I was actually tempted to cut it in half all the way, but you, look, in Malaysia, in all fairness, we don't use these giant banana chilies, okay? Um, this is virtually like a capsicum, just shaped like a chili. But um, this will actually take up a lot of the filling. So I'm, I'm tempted to actually cut it in half. I'm just worried that in the simmering process, because like I said, this uh, Malay-style stuffed chili um, actually gets simmered in coconut milk all right and i worry that the fish paste might peel off if i cut it in half that it might not have enough to grip the the, the, the to keep the fish paste in and these are the smaller chilies and i think from memory they, they're actually quite spicy maybe not um so let's just cut it open so these are completely like you wouldn't find these sort of chilies being used in malaysia right i i, I get i use these chilies because they're cheap because where i live here in sydney in this part of sydney cabramatta has everything and cabramatta will give you the best prices for all these things right but uh where i live which is um in cogra <laughs> i only buy i only have access to um, your regular greengrocer, like Australian greengrocers. Okay, what did I just do here? I cut this up the wrong. I cut this all the way when I shouldn't have. Okay, so we're not going to use that. Um, so regular greengrocers, like your red chilies at your regular greengrocer, costs thirty five bucks a kilo. All right. So I didn't want to spend. <laughs> I don't want to have to re <laughs> refinance anything just to buy some chilies so i bought these cheaper ones okay i have no idea i know this is uh, called banana chili i don't know what the these ones are called all right so we want to de-seed them okay and then let's get another one That's my son Noah. He's playing with the, an empty bucket in the room and just banging on the door. Okay, so let me just get rid of the seeds. Okay, so a big giant banana chili and two of the smaller ones here, okay? So again, this is fish paste that's got uh, uh, onion, garlic, um, it's got seasoning, it's got a little bit of a tapioca starch and it's got shredded coconut in it, alright? So that's the point of difference between uh, the Malay style um, fish paste for stuffing and the Chinese style. Okay. Okay, most of it's going to end up in this one here because it's, uh, it's quite deceptive, like with, even with regular chilies, it's quite deceptive how much uh, fish paste they will take because uh, the cavity is quite large that you need to fill up, okay? So the Malay style stuffed chili, it's called solot ladu, right? They don't stuff it like prettily and smooth it out, okay? It's meant to look a little bit like um, kind of rough. All right, well, certainly the ones that I've seen anyway. Okay. So there's one here. Let's stuff it a bit more. And Malay Yong Tao Fu. I know, right? Basically, I've never had it until I had the uh, Nasi Krabu, right? And it was only like, look, we had Nasi Krabu because like I said, um, my host who was my tour guide during my first trip in Mal to Malaysia had a house, who had a maid, a live-in maid who was from Kelantan, all right? So that was, um, she invited me over for Nasi Krabu. And then um, the next time I flew to Malaysia, um, we decided to do a live broadcast of Nasi Krabu with her maid making it at the Grand Hyatt. Um, 
am I losing? Okay, my frames are still okay. This is, I, I have never tasted them with coconut. Yeah, um, like I said, the texture is quite different. Okay, so don't expect your typical Chinese like uh, yong tau fu sort of thing. Is this is totally savory because the Chinese yong tau fu you have like a sort of like a sweet um, uh, sauce with that. I'm gonna make a, at least one more because I wanna I wanna be able to take a photo of this in broad daylight because it's night time here in Sydney. Okay, that is my instant pot. I'm just releasing the pressure from the pressure cooker. Hopefully the meat is tender enough for me to be able to work with. If you ever you're in KL and you want to taste uh, Kelantanese food, go to Kampong Baru. For whatever reason, Kampong Baru, which is essentially kind of like a, a Malay, like traditional Malay village right in the middle of uh, the KL like um, CBD. For whatever reason, um, I mean, it's got a lot of restaurants and stuff like that, but for whatever reason, a lot of these restaurants are run by Kelantanese um, 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 basically immigrants from other states, right? Alex is still trying to sign in. Do you own a bird? No, I don't, it's the birds outside. Uh, <laughs> damn, Alex. <laughs> Alex, just uh, just tell her to click on, uh, she can, you don't actually, you know, in all honesty, you don't have to sign in to be able to watch me on Twitch, all right? Uh, only if you want to comment and it'll, ta it'll tell you you need to sign in, okay? But you can sign in using your Facebook account. Um, otherwise, just create like a, yeah. <laughs> it's very it's very look one of these days i'm going to do a how-to video of how to follow me on twitch it is a uh, it's quite exhausting for me to go through all the steps even though it's uh to me it's straightforward but for whatever reason um people seem to have problems okay so i've got three little ones and one large gigantic one and we want to simmer this now um I'm going to use this and coconut cream. Okay. Good idea. It almost, sometimes I think, oh, I'm making it like, you know, uh, I don't want to like, it, yeah, but sometimes I kind of like, I don't know what people's level of understanding is with technology right it's it, it sounds really simple to me but i know it's hard for a lot of people by virtue of the fact that like all my twitch audience uh, to date um virtually all of it has been built from the twitch ecosystem itself for whatever reason my my million plus followers from other platforms either have trouble or they or for whatever reasons uh, strongly resist following me on twitch okay okay let's Okay, so the meat is cooked. I want to make sure that it is tender, but even if it's not, I can just look. I can just um, blitz it in a food processor if it needs the. Okay, it feels like it feels quite tough still, all right? So I might have to throw this in the food processor and just blitz this just so we can um, get it in a state where it's uh, workable. Okay, let's cut open the coconut cream. I'm gonna throw this in here. Okay. Coconut cream. I'm gonna add some water to this as well. All right, because I want to be able to at least have it come up to the halfway point. And we're gonna add a little bit of seasoning to the coconut cream as well. So again, my chicken powder. You can just use salt and sugar, but I'm just putting a bit of chicken powder in here. 
only thing they need now is a video. Valerie, hey, thanks for hosting. We need to spread the word about Twitch. I know, right? Damn it. Tell me about it. It's so frustrating. Okay, so a little bit of sugar here as well. Let's put this on the stove and start simmering away while... Look, we can probably... Uh, we can probably... I'm trying to figure out the best course of action because we got to do this and we got to do the beef as well. Um, all right, why not? Let's just go ahead and, and simmer this. Twitch is like an entirely different like uh, demographic to what I have on other platforms. Um, so when I tell, when I talk to Twitch people about Discord, about this and that, you guys just get it, you know. When I talk to people outside of Twitch, they're like, "Get yeah, you know, it's like a totally different language. Okay, we want to cover this and let this uh, simmer. So obviously we want to cook this all the way through, okay? Venestelix, hey, how you doing? Arigami, lots of people resist Twitch because they want everything at their fingertips. I know, so uh, exactly, I know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, see, the problem is like I used to stream, obviously, um, on a number of different platforms, but um, the problem with Facebook, which is where <laughs> I think uh, a lot of my most active audience is, is that Facebook keeps changing the uh, goalposts when it comes to live video streaming, right? Um, at some point, you could no longer basically like uh, mention brands or whatever unless you're uh, verified, whatever, and they just made it really hard. And now, at this point, I actually signed up for a third-party service that allows me to push my content um, simultaneously across a number of different platforms, which is why I'm actually concurrently streaming on YouTube and Periscope at the moment. And up until about a week ago, I was able to do that. Um, to Facebook as well, um, albeit uh, with a lot of, it was very buggy. Every time I streamed and included Facebook in the mix, uh, for whatever reason, um, I get all kinds of like buggy issues, right? But when it, it, in theory, it did work. But now they've changed it so that you can't even actually do it uh, from what I can see. I need to research it, but like um, the last couple of times I tried to also include uh, Facebook into the metric. It, it, it basically, they've just changed the layout with Facebook that prevents me from being able to do that. So, Chef Drew, how you doing? Hi, Links, hey, hey, Kay, how you doing? <laughs> All right, so this is coming up to a slow simmer. And like I said, there's a big giant chili and I am very uh, tempted to actually s uh, cut it into a two halves but we'll see how we go with this okay it just means it will take longer to cook all the way through so you just gotta be a little bit careful that you do cook it all the way through but like i said this is malay stuffed chili versus chinese stuffed chili chinese are very particular about texture about like um having things just cooked okay the malays have no problems killing this like three times over okay so they will simmer it till it's uh, well and truly dead and like um and and <laughs> and, uh, and 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 tough all right that's a huge chili. I know. This is what's called banana chili. It's, it looks a lot larger now because I've stuffed it with a whole, uh, uh, you know, bunch of fish paste, right? So now that they're stuffed with the fish, they're being simmered in coconut cream, all right? So uh, final result, these will be cooked through and also all the coconut cream will be absorbed by this, okay? So let's... Move this over there while it's doing its thing for a little bit. Is it a spicy chili? Unfortunately, no. Um, they have had like a like if you go to your local green grocer, um, <coughs> well the one that I do anyway. They have like green banana chilies. They have red banana chilies, and every now and then they'll have. Uh, sometimes they'll label them as hot banana chili. Okay, so when they say that they're hot, you know they're spicy. Okay, but generally no, they're like literally like capsicum. In all honesty. Can't have the food biting back. It's the only way to be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, you just saw that. It nearly uh, fall over. Let's take the lid off and leave it off. In all honesty, they usually simmer this with the lid off. I just thought it would just help move things along a little bit. Okay, let's just move this over there a bit. So I've got the beef here. Like I said, um, this was in the 
uh, instant pot for about 20 minutes pressurize for about 20 minutes still a little bit tough ideally i would have liked to be able to shred this okay but we're going to uh, short circuit it and we're just going to throw it in a blender and zip it because we're making surrounding which is a shredded beef um, shredded kind of like curry beef thing. okay the steamer is going full bore as well i want to turn it down a little bit so with the fish uh, crackers, we want to steam it apparently about 45 minutes, okay, but we'll see how we go. Um, let's use the thermo mix for this. They're like capsicum, that'd be perfect. <laughs> Deflot, hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. Haven't seen you for a little bit. Okay, so this is my thingo. I'm going to throw this in. Like I said, this is going to compromise on the texture, okay? You're going to end up with a little like... Um, basically like a mince as opposed to like beef shreds but you know it'll do all the mods are appearing oh cool how's uh life in uh in your camper dev lot okay so let's turn this around a little bit okay so this is looking like it's doing pretty good. Just parked up the beach and relaxing. Oh, very cool. I'd hate to think what your internet usage is like. Okay, I just realized I didn't get this plugged in. Okay, see you, Remy. Thanks for hanging around. Um, so this is the blue rice we made earlier, okay? And all of this is just uh, steamed rice, or well, rice cooker rice with a uh, blue, blue flour powder. Okay, this this pure blue flour powder. Okay, so it's got no coloring added to it, um, and they come in ten gram sachets. And by the end of Astoria, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Thank God that, that's the <laughs> I know, blue rice. So this is a part of a, essentially like a set meal. That's a traditional uh, Northern Malaysian Peninsula um, dish called Nasi Krabu. It's famous, okay? So if you Google Nasi Krabu, K-E-R-A-B-U, you will find that it's essentially kind of like a, uh, what we call nasi champo elsewhere, which is kind of like a combination, like a, a rice combo meal. And traditionally, it's served, like I said, with the blue lard rice with some herbs. Um, oh, it just reminded me. Oh, what did I put here? If I can find it. Um, yeah, with some herbs um, and a couple of uh, things that uh, are traditionally served, which is kind of like a, a grilled whole fish, usually kind of like a small. Um, macaroni kankambong kind of thing all right uh, which we're going to do this friday but i don't know in all honesty uh if you're non-asian whether you'll take to it because it's very bony and it's a whole fish okay but it's just kind of like a, a, a basic like grilled like uh fish that's been rubbed with spices um and then it's served with this thing here solot lada which is a malay stuffed chili and it's served with a gropo Okay, kropo uh, ikan, which is a, a fish cracker, and it's served with surunding. Surunding is like a Malay uh, curry uh, meat floss, okay, which we are going to make next. But this is the most distinctively, most distinctive part of a nasi krabu, which is blue rice. And up until today, we haven't been able to do this outside of Malaysia. Well, I haven't been able to do it, you know, maybe other people have been able to sneak it into the country, <laughs> but it is now available in Australia. So go uh, look up uh, mybluetea.com.au, I believe is the URL, right? Le not lekor, uh, just kropo, uh, uh, kropo ikan. Uh, kropo lekor is, uh, yeah, I haven't seen Kropot Leko served with Nasi Krabu. Maybe it does get served with Nasi Krabu, but the ones I've had have just had basic le like uh, reg regular Kropot Ikan. Okay, so let's see how this looks. I 
think the, the fish is uh, the fish cracker. I think it's done. Let me just pierce it quickly. I don't know if Kay is around. Uh, Oleg, how you doing? Just in small uh, mybluetea.com.au. That's right. Okay, so that is the right URL. <laughs> Look, don't worry about it. Uh, do you know if that is the right URL, uh, Lisa? Because uh, let me just give you permission to post. Um, actually, hi, links. If you're around, um, <laughs> can you permit Lisa uh, to post links so that other people can see where to find the uh, the blue powder? Okay, so guys, uh, the blue powder is available for um, up until I believe of the uh, end of September. It's available at a special price of um, three packs, including delivery, because these are expensive. Three packs, including delivery, sit uh, Australia wide for twenty five dollars. Okay, um, they are ten grams per pack. But during these next three broadcasts, we're going to be giving some away, okay? So each winner will win two of these sachets along with two packs of the blue tea, um, blue, you know, blue herbal tea packs, okay? Okay, no, uh, Hylings was saying that um, they were the only mod left and they were a bit scared because uh, Remy went off. Be proud that you're half Chinese. <laughs> Who's half Chinese? Blue butterfly pea flowers are quite trendy for making blue foods on Pinterest. Is that right? Blue lemonade. All right. Okay. Cool. See, so you know, you know this better than I do. So look at how how intensely blue this has become <laughs> over the last hour since I started making. I've been here the whole time. I look. Okay. See, there you go. Hi, links. No stress. Everybody's here. Okay. Look at how well this is. Uh, this cooked up okay I'm gonna now cover this a little bit just to make sure like I said I'm a little bit concerned about the giant chili it's quite flavorsome actually <laughs> I just kind of like taste a little bit of the of the coconut okay so let's just cover this and keep the heat in hopefully it'll cook a little bit better Okay, just on its, uh, if you run into a problem, tell me, tell me about a person who you think is troublesome here. Okay, look, this, ha this doesn't look too bad, okay? It looked kind of shreddy, okay, which is great. So this is um, just your regular cheaper gravy beef. It's like the cheapest color. I know, like, look, uh, to be fair, gravy beef is a little bit sinewy, okay? But, um, you know... Once you cook it out as surrounding, maybe it doesn't matter so much. Usually when I make surrounding, I use leftover meat, but nowadays I don't need so much meat. So usually like, because um, it's just me and Noah, my little Down syndrome toddler, five-year-old toddler. Um, like if we buy like a barbecue chicken or whatever, and we've got some leftover barbecue chicken, or we cook like a roast lamb, we've got leftover uh, lamb, I'll just shred it up and then make surrounding out of it, okay? So I very rarely kind of like cook it from scratch. I need a, uh, I need a, uh, something to cook it in. use this pan here I reckon this is done um, no I'll just leave it a little bit God for that I'm just uh, just on its own I'll sort them out yeah cake you can trust K to uh, to go full postal <laughs> CK I do appreciate you even if I don't show it I'm just gonna tip this out right and then I'm gonna like uh, split some onion and garlic and then we're going to yeah since I'm cooking I mean I'm gonna be everything's going in there anyway I'm not gonna bother rinsing this out first but there you go that's my shredded beef right and let's get some onion I want some fresh onion in this case because It just tastes nicer, right? But if you're short on time, you can use this uh, fried shallots, okay? So 
So a couple of fresh onions. Did you get that parcel I sent you, Kay? Those, uh, what are those sticks called again? The, the, those disgusting things? And um, guys, I'm not keeping an eye on the follower numbers. If by some fluke we hit 1850, <laughs> let me know so we can also do a draw for the Lenovo mini speaker tonight, all right? Or next time or whenever. I ate them already. Oh, okay, cool. They are disgusting, right? So two onions, and look, I'm gonna cheat again and just use dried garlic this time around, all right? Just because I can't be bothered fetching it from my fridge. So we're gonna blitz this, you know what? Uh, I need to go to my fridge anyway, so I'm gonna get that because I need some minced lemongrass. following growing well mustics that's it mustics <laughs> they are great uh, yeah lenovo giveaway yeah i know uh hypothetical we've been to the speaker instead of the blue stuff but i have the blue stuff instead oh yeah sure yeah <laughs> did you already no you haven't you haven't won the speaker before have you okay so these are peeled uh garlic cloves all right because you know i like my garlic so lots of it go in there and then I've got some minced lemongrass. You guys have seen me use this before. So this is a frozen, uh, sometimes it's called chopped, sometimes it's minced lemongrass. You can find this in the freezer section of your Asian grocery store. Um, especially ones run by the Vietnamese, all right? Which means Cabramato is your best bet for this sort of stuff. Um, let's put this aside. So we're just gonna blitz, blitz this and we're gonna add lemongrass to it because it's already minced, I don't need to throw it in, okay? But if you were using fresh lemongrass, you'll wanna cut like the bottom like four inches or so um, and throw it in together with this, all right? I've got the worst luck. Have you won anything before, Highlings? I don't think you have, right? Okay, so onion and garlic here. Let's add the lemongrass. Okay, and then we want some curry powder to this. Okay, and you've heard me mention the curry powders I use. Look, in this instance, I'm, I'm just going to grab what's available. Uh, in this instance, it's rendang curry powder, okay? So it's labeled rendang powder. Okay, uh, this is a Malaysian brand. Um, look, a regular curry powder will do. The rendang, uh, Malaysians, uh, Malaysian brands of curry powders tend to be a little bit more nu nuanced than your usual, uh, like Clive's curry powder, all right? So the Malaysians like to have uh, them divided into either rendang or meat curry powder or fish curry powder, seafood curry powder, and that sort of stuff. But look, uh, it's very nuanced, so you may not notice the difference at all, okay? So by all means, just use whatever's available. Like I said, I'm using the rendang one, which tends to be a little bit spicier than your average uh, curry powder and also a little bit darker. Okay, I just about killed this because I got caught up talking. So this will be done. Okay, it's not meant to, <laughs> it's not meant to brown like this. Just this aside.
there you go. That's your solot ladder, all right? See some brown patches there? Just pretend they don't exist, okay? <laughs> and then they're fine, they're not birds, but they're a little bit like, uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit borderline. Okay, so let's move this over here. And we're gonna start heating this up. I'm gonna throw the onion, garlic, lemongrass mix in here. Scrape it in. Okay, the onion has a lot of moisture in it, which is why I generally don't add the oil, heat it up, and throw in the uh, throw in the rumpa. This is what we call the rumpa mix immediately. Okay. Um, the rundown powder will help dry some of this up. All right, so. Throw this in. Let's mix this through. I'm gonna go and grab some oil and I'm gonna saute this. Okay, so a little bit more. In. Is the podcast dead? goes the oil and this is gonna take a little bit longer than I like because uh, as usual the this dinky little stove takes a doesn't produce the kind of heat I like it to do <laughs> I think that's a typo. <laughs> okay. So we're going to add some seasoning to this. We're going to add some coconut cream to this. We're going to add the, the mince in it. And in the end, we're going to, why not use a less dinky stove? <laughs> because I'm cooking in my living room. Um, uh, Cookie actually suggested I use like a portable induction stove, but induction stoves require like uh, induction uh, appliances. But um, I don't know if you've got any suggestions, let me know, you know. Because sometimes I use, well, I like to think I can use like ceramic and whatever else to cook. Has heard no one in the background. Yeah. I know he's, uh, he's happy though. I think he's just kind of like uh, playing really rough with his toys at the moment. But uh, just put a couple things away. And look, some of the herbs I bought, again, like I, I was tempted to head down to Cabra Manor, which has everything as far as Asian ingredients are concerned. But today we had like 32 degrees heat. And I actually stepped out of the house this morning to attend a, um, a medical appointment with Noah, thinking it was going to be like a regular day. So I had like a, a jumper on and I thought I was just going to go to the medical appointment then head out to Cabra Manor. But I was so, um, it was so stiflingly hot. I was thinking, no, I need to go home and get changed I ended up just picking up some herbs from your standard western greengrocer boy they were expensive too <laughs> but this is all I got all right I got coriander and I got basil okay so look but and I bought one cucumber because I'm so cheap because <laughs> the cucumber was like five bucks a kilo you know I'm sure they went five bucks a kilo two weeks ago um, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to pull out as well. This is frozen. This is uh, what we call uh, bunga kantan in Malaysia, all right? This is like a ginger flower bud. Um, that's what it looks like. And it gives a really, really nice flavor. Yeah, I'm gonna cut some shreds of it and serve it with this dish here, ultimately. 
But like I said, what you're going to see at the end of tonight is kind of like half a nasi krabu, okay? Because we're going to be missing the uh, the traditionally uh, fried fish, or I say grilled, but it's actually fried fried fish, and also the traditional croppot, which uh, like I said, will take like um, till my next session to finish because it needs to be essentially chilled in the fridge till it's solid so it's easy to cut into thin slices yeah today is horror i know right so you can't find that in kamsi the this one here uh try cabramatta all <laughs> right <laughs> uh, I, I saw you're in sydney venice telex goodbye watch the intro ad twice what intro ad what are you talking about <laughs> Hey, Johan, how you doing? I meant to message everyone, but for those of you who were waiting on your giveaways, they've all been dispatched, all right? So I don't owe anybody anything at my end unless your parcel goes missing. But Johan knows uh, his stuff is on the way. But um, who else? Uh, Edge of Night's got a parcel on the way to her. Um, who else? Uh, Brad Lapo's got a parcel on the way to him. And um, this girl over who's... <laughs> I mean, I to, usually all my giveaways are won by my regulars but this totally random girl won one of my giveaways and she's somewhere in the states and then um soybean jenny's got a giveaway on the way to her as well so okay so i, I sent out six down this anyone um but everyone's got theirs on the way there's a microsoft ad is that right i did not know that all right the ginger flower yeah I don't know how to drive there. Catch a train. Catch a train. Uh, or just the M5. All the way on the M5 to the Hume Highway exit, right? Um, so exit on the Hume Highway, turn right, and then you'll see a sign for the Cumberland Highway on the left. Turn left, and that will take you, uh, and then you'll see a sign to Cameron Mad on right. So uh, M5 exit on the Hume Highway turn right down to the Hume Highway for a couple of kilometers, left into Cumberland Highway, and then right into Cabramatta. Easy peasy. I can drive there with my uh, blindfolded. But that's because I'm, I'm virtually a local in Cabramatta, because when I came to Australia, that's the part of Sydney we actually settled in. Not for me. I wonder if it's... Uh, does ad block actually block the ads or no it wouldn't would it because it's actually a video ad is it I, I see i never see that i don't even i didn't even know that uh, when they say no ads i assume that they were actually like um kind of like display ads as opposed to video ads oh how interesting so there you go my subs uh my subs don't see the ads all right for those of you confused about why you have to sub you don't but if you do sub you don't see the ads taking the train is easy yeah Lisa, are you in Sydney or? I love waking up one hour before my hour. <laughs> See, that's dedication. Because you love school so much. You love Twitch so much that you have to start your day with Twitch, uh, Johan. <laughs> alright, let's add the shredded meat, alright? So, you can see, like, I only had like three, what, three pieces of meat? And once it's shredded, it kind of like seems to expand, doesn't it? You're going to end up with a lot here. Look, I just remembered, uh, I'm going to add some shredded coconut to this too, okay? And the surrender I've mentioned, you can use chicken instead of the beef, right? And you can use... Uh, dried shrimp as well all right or you can just have a coconut surrounding as well okay so don't be too fixated on the beef though to be fair uh kelantan is famous for its beef surrounding so you can if you go to the big market in kelantan you'll find people selling it by the big sack pools all right they'll have like yeah a lot of surrounding I go to Sydney every Sunday. Oh, okay, Newcastle. Okay, that won't work now. It knows I'm starting on it. <laughs> hey, hi, links. <laughs> Got chicken meatball pasta for dinner. All right, what? Uh, you bought it or you made it? There's one thing I noticed that Australians eat a lot of pasta. I don't eat pasta, I eat noodles. 
Okay, let's add the seasoning. Okay, uh, you can be a little bit more generous with the sugar in the, the surrounding. Okay, and the other thing I need to point out as well, Kelantanese food, Kelantanese curries and a lot of the food in Kelantan um, tends to be sweeter. All right, their sweets tend to be sweeter and their savouries tend to be sweeter than your average Malay, uh, Malaysian curry. Okay, I've mentioned before how the Thais seem to like their sugar a lot. Um, like the Thai, like chicken cur uh, Thai red curry and all that sort of stuff. You can distinctly taste your sugar. Kelantan actually borders Thailand. Okay, so a lot of the ingredients and cooking styles of the Kelantanese uh, have some synergies with uh, Thai cooking actually. Okay, that's why Kelantanese food is fairly unique in Malaysia, okay? And different states in Malaysia have their different takes on the cuisine. But yeah, the Kelantanese, uh, Kelantan actually back in the day used to be a protectorate of the Siamese kingdom. Okay? And I think the biggest like uh, Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia is actually in Kelantan. Something like that, something crazy like that. You wouldn't think it because Kelantan is actually a very Muslim state. All right, it's got 95% like Malay and they're very Muslim. Uh, they're so Muslim that um, someone, somebody else disputed me about this, but I was there, like I said, um, I was there um, as a guest of Tourism uh, Kelantan and there was, when I went to their wet market on a visit, the vendors actually got me confused with a Malaysian uh, pop star from like yesteryear, from like 30 years ago. Her name is Anita Sarawak. All right, because of the blonde hair, because she used to look like she was kind of like the Malaysian Madonna, even though she's actually from Singapore. Uh, she was kind of like the Malaysian Madonna, right? Um, so with the short blonde hair. And when I showed up at the market, the, the Kelantanese locals thought I was Anita Sarawak, okay? Um, and like I said, she's from yesteryear. So, and uh, my tour guide, my Kelantanese tour guide, who was uh, basically uh, from Tourism Kelantan, he apologized to me and he said the reason they didn't realize uh, that I wasn't Anita Sarawa was because they hadn't had television for 20 years since the Muslim government took um, came into power in Kelantan. All right, so I, 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 I mentioned this live on air and then someone, in, uh, someone from Kelantan said, oh no, they do have television there. But I don't know, they know this as the current state of affair or whether they left Kelantan so long ago, back before the... Um, the, the Islamic party took over. So I don't know, I don't know. But I was told by the tour guide from Tourism Kelantan that they don't have a television, they don't have movie theaters in Kelantan, all right? But this time that made them, oh, at least it's homemade, not frozen, right? I'd have went with it. <laughs> See, the thing is, Anita Sarawa, is like now in her 60s, okay? So I'm old, but I'm not quite that old. Um, <laughs> but it was quite funny. And the other thing about Kelantan is it's such a conservative Islamic state that I didn't realize this, all right? I went to this event. Um, I went to this event, which is kind of like, a, they don't have like pop music in Kelantan, but they have this thing called Dikil Barat, which is kind of like the, uh, the traditional singing, thing all right so it's just like you have yodeling in the swiss and whatever sort of thing dikilara is like the kelantanese kind of like a singing troupe kind of thing all right and they had a competition a dikilara competition which is basically different troops of um uh, singers uh doing these really cute renditions uh of traditional songs but the the interesting thing was like um no women were allowed all right the, so the singers were all, all men and then they had all these VIPs at the events, like kind of like royalty and all that. And I was introduced to them and I put out my hand to shake hands with them and they, <laughs> they wouldn't shake my hand because in uh, Kelantan, the men don't shake hands with women. <laughs> See, how, <laughs> just how ignorant I am, all right? Graham Carr's the main cook show, that's the, nothing in the Quran against television. <laughs> don't know. No comment. All right, so we're going to add some coconut cream to this. If you've got ginger, you can add some uh, uh, ground ginger in this as well, all right? So this is kind of like your, the ingredients that go into this are the same as what would go into a curry, except it's with shredded meat. So you're gonna end up with like a dry shredded, uh, flavorsome shredded meat thing, okay? Graham Carr. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I know Graham Carr. 
if you guys Google Anita Sarawak, S A R A W A K, right? There was a period of time where she had blonde hair, okay? So. But yes, uh, Kelantan is like uh, some of the friendliest people I ever met anywhere in Malaysia, okay? So different, like, uh, different states have their own um, kind of like vibes, all right? People think Malaysia is a fairly, geographically is not that big a country, okay? Uh, but um, even like from state to state, the people can be quite different, all right? But the Kelantanese are some of the friendliest people I ever met. And the strangest thing is, like I said, it's like 95% Malay, all right, which by default means Muslim, but the five percent of Chinese they 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 speak better Malay than the average Malay in other parts of Malaysia. It's really unusual. <laughs> it's very unusual for a Chinese person to speak Malay like a native, right, in Malaysia, um, because for whatever reason the, the the Chinese are very dead set in their ways. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to fry this till it's a nice dark color and it's uh, dried up, right? Johanna was a Dutch woman who led a political party when she met some Islamic guys. She got super mad that they refused to shake hands. <laughs> Grand car, I'll have to look, look it up. <laughs> On live TV, I'm sorry, how's her last name? Who was the mo I can't remember her name, happened like seven years ago. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a Muslim thing. It still happens today, right? Sometimes I think like I saw something on um, some headline the other day. I don't know if it's Australia or something like that. But uh, tr a conservative Muslim men will not shake hands with women. All right. I mean, look. To be fair, because I was a guest in Kelantan, like uh, you know. Uh, some of the like tourism Malaysia men, all right. When I when I shook hands with them, they you know they reciprocated. But like if they're not part of the um, the entourage, uh, you can expect to be uh, kind of like declined, all right. But still, like I said, you know, Kelantan is some of the friendliest people I ever met anywhere in Malaysia. There was a Bogan woman who led a political party, but when she couldn't make a burqa ban, she wore, wore a burqa into the Sydney. <laughs> okay, flavor-wise, this is pretty spot on. It tastes to me like I could actually add a little bit more chicken powder, but I'm gonna resist that because I know that as it dries up, like the, the flavor will intensify, all right? So let's just keep frying this a little bit more. Well, I put some more things away. Um, so again, guys, stick around because uh, at the end of tonight, we're going to draw. We'll draw three three people to win these, okay? And the names are going to be sent over to Alex, who's the sponsor of uh, these products. Or I'm not getting paid to do this, by the way, guys. So I don't think I'm raking it in or anything like that. I'm just kind of like a. Uh, uh, giving her a shout out for her products, but uh, in, uh, her, reciprocally, she's offering 10 sets of these, okay? Two packs of the uh, bags of herbal tea and two sachets of these uh, blue flower powder. <laughs> it's such a tongue twister, I have to make sure I'm saying the right thing. Is this halal? I don't eat halal, gosh. <laughs> Graham Carr was a TV cooking host, 1969. Holy moly, that's even before my time. Rita Verdonk. Oh, okay. Rita Verdonk, Dutch politician. I'll have to Google her after this. Okay, we want to fry this up some more. Okay. And by the way, the surrounding, like once it's cooked up, it does keep very well, all right? Um, keep it in, an, they always say airtight containers, but how airtight look? Um, the only thing that you risk going off in that is the oil that you use to cook it with. So the oil, when it starts to get rancid, you will know it's off, okay? But the if you fry this dry enough, the meat itself will not get moldy or anything like that, okay? Um, so, and you, in Kelantan, they will serve this in with virtually everything. They'll serve it with um, like a fried rice, 
um, as a little like topping, right? Uh, they'll serve it with, like I said, the nasi kerabu. And I have seen it served with laksa as well, like, okay? The Kelantanese have a very specific type of laksa, which looks nothing like the laksa that you would know in Australia, okay? It's completely white in color. And it's uh, got like poached, shredded poached fish in it. And it's got a whole bunch of like herbs in it as well, okay? It's very, very nice. I've made it before live on air, I think. Um, so there's a recipe for laksa kelantan on my website, which is jackiem.com.au, so if you want to look it up. But uh, the version of laksa kelantan I had in kelantan, to be fair, they did admit, because this was at a hotel, all right? To be fair, they did say they kind of like uh, blinged it up a bit, all right, by adding the surrounding on top. So, you know, you if you go to your local Kelantanese um, street store and ask for laksa kelantan, they probably won't have the surrounding with it. But it just goes to show how uh, versatile this particular dish is, okay? And look, if you want it, like, you can use it as a sandwich filling as well, okay? Cookie, chicken rendang. There's uh, that called what, white trash. What's chicken rendang called? Beef rendang is called surrounding. Uh, chicken rendang. <laughs> is that called white? <laughs> is that no what I hear? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm a late rendang, I am. Yeah. Hey, Aishai, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about, Rinda? So, surrounding is kind of like a, an all encompassing term that covers all kinds of like shredded meat floss, alright? So, it can be even a fish floss, okay? It can be a surrounding ikan. Um, so, you can do a surrounding ayam, which is a chicken surrounding, okay? And like I said, you can just do it with just coconut, okay? Or with dried shrimp all kinds of stuff this is taking a little bit longer than i would like okay because it's quite it's quite rich and creamy because of the coconut cream i added to it you can hear the sizzling you know that it's still got a little bit of moisture in it um to some extent it's a personal preference thing so you like if you, li you like it a little bit moist all right you can take it off now and then like just keep in mind that it won't keep as well okay unless you freeze it or something it'll freeze very well uh, hey, Wiku, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you, you bet. <laughs> but lemang, yeah, that's right, yeah, lemang will, will go really well with it. Lemang, by the way, guys, is like a sticky rice that's kind of like cooked in bamboo, all right? So it's t tubular in shape, cylindrical in shape, and it's kind of like compressed, so it's really nice. And they usually serve it with uh, surrounding, especially during Raya, which is uh, the Malay kind of New Year. <laughs> Shut up, Sammy. <laughs> make this last Thursday Friday with the crab and stuff it looks like did I make something with crab and stuff what did I make um I know I, I haven't done this in months so I don't remember what I made um it looks a lot like it what did I make last uh Thursday Friday last Friday hmm I don't think I've made it crab and stuff <laughs> I don't remember, but it definitely wasn't this because I haven't done this in months and months. Okay, of course I've run out of gas, so let's switch over our gas canister a little bit. And by the way, guys, um, after this series, I'm going to go straight into the... Um, the barbecue series all right so i've got a number of recipes lined up which i'm actually going to be shooting like short edited videos for uh for barbecues galore so don't forget guys when we hit 2000 followers all right it looks like a <laughs> an un unachievable dream at this point but you never know uh then i will have two barbecues galore uh ziggy barbecues to give away to australian residents only unfortunately or australian addresses only at this stage um, they were $749 each, okay? So make sure, if you don't already follow me on Twitch, make sure you follow me at twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food, and it's free, don't forget, unless you subscribe. You don't have to subscribe, you just need to follow to be in the running for any of my giveaways. And, um, of course, when we hit 1850, the giveaway is going to be a Lenovo mini speaker. When we hit 1900, the giveaway is going to be a Rode microphone, all right? So it's a professional Rode microphone. Quite something. I'm not sure. Aussie lamb ad. 
by Twitch followers totally legit. Dot. <laughs> Is that such a thing? Does anyone do that? I've never in my whole my whole entire life online I've never bought a single follower for what it's worth all right guys I'm that I'm that uh, I'm that first of all I'm that honest and second of all I'm that cheap all right but yeah I've never bought a single follower I have uh, for the best part of a year on Facebook paid for Facebook ads all right there's all within Facebook's ecosystem for the best part of a year I did pay Facebook directly to promote my Facebook page all right, and it seems as though, despite it going through uh, Facebook directly, it seems as though, it seems as though I essentially um, ended up with a whole bunch of followers who didn't look like they were real followers. But that's not on me; that's on Facebook, okay? Uh, and when I realized that these uh, new followers weren't doing anything, I stopped paying Facebook for the Facebook ads. But I have never actually overtly actually gone out and paid for followers or paid for comments or likes and all that sort of rubbish, okay? <laughs> Spell it right, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm just trying this. What was that link's high link? This face really good. Um, I want to show you the fish cake. These hopefully will turn into fish crackers, okay? So this has been steamed. I hope it's steamed completely through. All right, so it feels a little bit like, um, it, it feels quite solid now, okay? I'm gonna assume it's cooked all the way through. And now I need to refrigerate it till it's solidified completely. Um, so it's easy to slice up, all right? So usually, like I said, in Malaysia, when my aunt used to make this, this was a specialty, albeit with prawns. Um, she used to slice it up and spread them out onto b these big like mats and sun dry them on her front yard Okay, didn't really have a yard, but on her, you know in front of her house um, Huge amounts of them and then she would basically dispense them out to family, okay? Um, and then what you need to do with these sliced crackers you need to deep fry them and they will expand into these kind of like a, yeah, You know, you know what crackers are like, right? Well, uh, Asian prawn crackers but this is fish okay so uh friday's broadcast we're gonna do uh we're gonna pick up where we left off with this and in the meantime this is what we've got so far today i'm gonna actually slice up some salad ingredients okay my solitary cucumber Hey, Apewat, how you doing? Sammy is more amazing than Deathlock. <laughs> so that's what happens when the mods come out for in force. Apewat, we're gonna do a giveaway shortly, so stick around. Okay, this is for Asian ingredients though, so I don't know if that's your thing. If anyone wins it and is best friends with high links, I think they'll be very appreciative <laughs> if, if you uh, <laughs> you nominated them to get the giveaway. High links is a big um, herbal tea drinker, so high links has been very interested in the teas to this point. All right. I should be stirring this a little bit more frequently because it's starting to scorch a little bit. All right, that's why something like shrunding can be fairly labor intensive. You are doing this, you can in fact cook it in a thermal cooker, or thermal mix, let it do the stirring for you, and that's what I usually do. In all honesty, but of course, when you're cooking something in a in an enclosed system like that, you know, you can't see anything that's happening. All right, so even though that they even though they're great kitchen gadgets, they're not very good for. Uh, cooking demonstrations okay I'm gonna peel this off here because it tastes really nice already so we're, we're just grabbing some random like bits of herbs okay because I know like in Australia you hard press especially if you don't have any Asian 
If you don't, if you're not near Cabramatta, you may be hard pressed to find like decent Asian herbs. Okay. But let's just do it. What we've got. So I've got some Thai basil and some coriander. Yeah. And this is um, the ginger bud, ginger flower, ginger ginger flower bud. All right. It's a type of ginger. It's not your regular uh, kind of ginger, by the way, guys. Okay. Hey, Sue, how you doing? <laughs> All right, so this is done. Let's assemble everything. slice this big giant chili up mm, the chilies are so nice um, did I miss anything? So there you go. Okay, so that's my nasi krabu so far. Work in progress because I'm missing a couple of ingredients here, but this is enough for a full meal as it is. Okay, so we've got the surrounding, which is the uh, spicy shredded meat. We've got the salt larder, which is the stuffed um, peppers, stuffed chili. We've got the blue rice. Okay, we've got some herbs over here. And we've got the ginger flower. Look, that's like I say, you know, whatever you can get your hands on, it'll do okay. So don't be too fixated on like trying to get the exact uh, set of herbs that um, is mentioned in the Malay recipe, say, because you're going to be hard pressed to find um, like for like here in Australia. All right. So, nasi krabu, like I said, uh, usually. There'll be a couple more things here, uh, primarily the fish cracker, which we're going to finish off on Friday, and also usually like a fried fish with it as well. There you go. Looks kind of more, love the blue light rice. It is intriguing, right? I know, that's the one point of difference. Uh, that's the one distinctive feature of this particular dish that we've never been able to replicate until now, right? Because of the blue butterfly powder, okay? So there you go. Are we ready for the giveaway? Are we guys ready? Let's have a look. Let me just see if I can pull up the um, the giveaway tool, all right? Uh, hopefully it works. Where are we? Lock tools. I think they grow, or it can be grown locally. I've never seen blue rice that vibrant. Yeah, so this is actually like pure blue um, butterfly flower powder, okay? It's not like a, a an artificial coloring and it's meant to have a whole bunch of health benefits so just to milo taylor what street food is like <laughs> milo <laughs> how, 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 how much time have you got um to use it in fried rice no not at all totally use it okay um whoops what was that um milo go to my website right uh, jackiem.com.au and look up uh, there's a blog post there called um Look up street food recommendations, okay? And uh, there's a blog post I covered about where to eat in KL and that sort of stuff. Um, 
yeah, I think it's called street food recommendations. But street food in Malaysia is incredibly diverse. But look, your best bet, in all honesty, is uh, find someone local to take you around. Okay, whether it's a a very good tour guide, and if you want, I can hit you up with someone who's won uh, tour guide of the year a um, couple of times. Right, um, very very gracious uh, Malay gentleman. Uh, and also I know this other woman as well who's a, an excellent tour guide, right? Uh, otherwise, if you've got friends, make sure they take because the one thing about Malaysian street food is that like um, it can be a little bit hit or miss, okay? I've had people who basically, you know, um, got their experience of street food through eating at my restaurant when I had my restaurant who subsequently went to Malaysia and thought they were a little bit disappointed, okay? So there are certain things to look out for. Um, we should start encouraging more street food on Australian streets. I know, right? I know. Things to grow at her number 36. <laughs> yeah, be interesting to see if you can grow this. But okay, so let's do the giveaway. Lock tools, lock tools. Did I start it up? Uh, lock tools. Okay. Did I add lock tools in here? Okay, I haven't added it this time around. Uh, screen capture. Okay, let's capture lock tools. Are we ready, guys? Okay, lock tools. Sammy is more amazing than death lock. <laughs> <laughs> Bans everyone. <laughs> okay, I'll be ready, guys. So, winner, uh, uh, look, I, I reckon a lot of you are going to win tonight, all right? So, you get two lots each of these packs of uh, the tea and two packs of these sachets, okay? Um, an update is ready to be installed. No, I'm not about to install any update. Let's add viewers. Load. Are we ready? Okay. Okay, okay, let me delete, uh, where am I? Let me delete Nightbot. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Let's do this. Congratulations, Aisha, all right? That's the first giveaway. That's the first, I know, Aisha. I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Aisha must be my luckiest uh, follower. Okay, uh, where do you live? Don't worry about me coming to your house at night. Okay, so we've got three lots to give away. Don't forget. Ooh, no one. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You are done, you are so done. Let's draw again, all right? So second person, let's start this.
Congratulations, Cookie. <laughs> oh my goodness. There you go, guys. All right, so that's three people. I shy, Cookie, and Sammy, all regulars. Congratulations, guys. You guys deserve it. Um, too bad, hi, Ling. So uh, we're going to... <laughs> We've got seven more to give away over the next two broadcasts. All right, guys. So make sure you stick around. My next broadcast is Sydney time, GMT plus 10, Sydney time, Friday at 6 p.m. Okay, so again, we are very Australian based, uh, Australian, New Zealand based. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, Cookie, Aishai and um, Sammy. I think, uh, yeah, look, would you mind just sending me your addresses again? Because I don't want to have to dig too deep into all my previous uh, messages to find them. Uh, that will make me make it a lot easier. They're all going to be sent out by uh, Alex, who is the, like I said, who is providing these products, right? Um, so thank you so much on uh, for, for taking part, guys. Thanks so much for hanging around. So like I said, next broadcast, we're going to do another three or four draws, all right? Look, we'll do three draws on Friday, uh, 6 p.m. So stick around then. We'll finish off the nasi krabu and then we'll do something else as well, something blue again, all right? Um, and I will see you guys on Friday, 6 p.m. And then the next draw will be Monday, okay? We won't do a draw on Saturday night. Uh, should we? No, no, because I want to cook some more recipes on Monday, okay? So spread across those three nights. Uh, and I will, uh, Monday, Monday, 12 o'clock midday, all right? So I will see you again, guys. Thanks so much for your patience. Thanks for sticking around, and I will see you. Ciao.